coming right now. So, um, one of our um, longtime friends and slightly less longtime members, John Peter, um, who has been a friend of Holy Apostles for many years. He helped in the, um, the discovery of the site that the uh, building project is happening on, the site of the historic St. Joseph Chapel. Um, he has been in, in, instrumental in many aspects of this project, and so now we'll hear from him for a few minutes about the state of the building project now, and uh, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Peter, take it away. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Yes! yes. <laughs> Amazing. Brothers and sisters, give me your ears. I promise if I have silence to be finished within 90 seconds. But if I hear voices, I can go on as long as Father George. <laughs> silence. I'm going to report on the building committee. Do you know there is a building committee? Everybody together? Yes. Do you know the building committee meets every Friday? Yes. Yes. I heard a no. The building committee meets every Friday unless there's a snowstorm or something. The majority of Fridays for X number of years now, you have a building committee that is working every week and is very close now to submitting, there's a fancy name for this, submitting a request for permits. We are very close to having permission to build the parish hall. What does that mean to you? If you have a permit and you have, you can, it's called fill in the blank. You have, if you have a permit and you have money, money, everybody say that? Money. You can build what? A church. Something. Anything. <laughs> yes, that is my report. I want to thank uh -oh. you for your attention. Here, here. <laughs> Shorter than the sermon. Yeah. This is um, this is about the matching grant we're doing so we can build. Ephraim. Okay, please. Um, and uh, it's $25,000, which is the largest one we've had so far. Very much larger. Um, last night, I wanted to tell you about Daniel. He, he came to church this week. Thursday, he came to the canon, and it was pretty wonderful. It was his first time coming to the canon as a rational being, not just a kid on his mommy's back. And I think he did 100 uh, prostrations, and he participated in the service. It was quite wonderful. This is what we're about. We want to be able to bring the children to the faith and our neighbors and our, our loved ones and our and our inquirers, the people who maybe they've left the faith for a long time, but they're coming back now. Last night, Daniel was at the vigil for the Sunday of Orthodoxy, and when we brought the gospel out, he asked his daddy, Daniel, do you want to tell us what you asked your daddy? Was the gospel made? Was it made? And what he meant by that, was it like the icon not made with hands of Christ, is the gospel in that same category? I thought that was really wonderful in me, and it was a very great question and very deep. And then Daniel also said, oh, we're not going to talk about the answer, but he said, I remember when I was so short I couldn't reach the gospel. This memory has gone into his soul of reverencing the gospel, even when he was so short, he couldn't reach it. <laughs> That's a really good thing. Um, not all of us can have that. I didn't have it. I didn't become Orthodox until I was 35. But then the Lord lit me on fire to be able to share it and be a missionary. And now he's blessed our, our little parish with all of these children. I, um, I pray that you will pray that we can make this match by Palm Sunday. I know it's a lot, but the Lord made the whole everything, all of creation, in six days. Um, I have a short quote from a homily by St. Tifon. He says, um, Offer 
during earnest prayers for the successful preaching of Christ, we can also show our interest to help it by helping it materially. Do you want to read it? Uh, I just want to remind everybody who St. Peter was. Oh, point uh, to him. One of the new ones. Behind you. Right point to him. On the wall. Up. Right there. Up to the right. To the right. See St. John of Cardstadt? Here he is. Thank you. Hello. In the Russian church. By the way, can we build a church while there's a war going on? Um, our sure. predecessors, who were refugees from uh, communism, came over here and they built churches while there was a terrible war going on. And there are people in this room that are related to the new martyrs, and I know other people who've already gone reposed who were also related. So. Yes, we can build a church while there's a war going on. And this was a speech he gave in America. Yes, a homily. Yes. He said, mm. we can show our our help, our interest in building the church by helping it materially. This is St. Tecum. It was so in the primitive church. And the apostles lovingly accepted material help to the cause of the preaching seeing in it an expression of Christian love and zeal. In our days, these offerings are especially needed because for the lack of them, the work often comes to a dead stop. We don't want that to happen in our parish. We don't want to come to a dead stop. So even if so. Um, for the lack of them, preachers cannot be sent out or supported. Churches cannot be built or schools founded. All this needs money, and members of other religions find ways to supply it. Perhaps you will say, these people are richer than ourselves. That is true enough. <coughs> but great means are accumulated by small, and if everybody amongst us gave what he could toward this purpose, we could also raise considerable needs. Accordingly, do not be ashamed of the smallness of your offering. If you have much, offer all you can. But do offer. Do not lose the chance of helping the cause of the conversion of your neighbors to Christ, because by so doing, in the words of St. James, you shall save your own souls and hide a multitude of sins. That's pretty wonderful. That's your That's his confession. So, anyway. Orthodox people, in celebrating the day of orthodoxy, you must devote yourselves to the Orthodox faith, not in word or tongue only, but in deed and truth. Amen. Amen. Amen.